This is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Loop Stitch Crochet Lawn Rug, which is a free pattern you'll find on Yarnspirations.com. I had a lot of fun designing this pattern using Lily Sugar and Cream. And for this pattern, you'll want to go ahead and get two cones of Lily Sugar and Cream, and you'll want a USMN 9mm hook. Might say M, might say N, just depends on the manufacturer. Nine millimeters is the important part. And the reason you'll need two cones is because we're going to hold them together. So today I'm going to be demonstrating how to hold those two yarns together and how to crochet this really fun stitch pattern. So here's the finished lawn rug, and you can see it really features this beautiful loop stitch, which is actually crocheted from the wrong side. It's a lot of fun, and again, I'll be demonstrating that here in a moment. But I just wanted to show you, this is actually folded in half. The finished measurements are 20 inches wide by 31 and a half inches long, but the great thing about this pattern is there's not really a stitch multiple or a certain number of rows needed, so really you can make it any size you like. Now for this pattern, I used the Key Lime Pie colorway, and as I mentioned, you'll need two cones. This is just what's left after I made my rug. So what you'll want to do is go ahead and find the ends from both of your cones, and just hold them together and crochet them as if they were just one strand. So at the end of this pattern, you'll only have these four ends to weave in. Okay, so holding my two strands of yarn together, I will go ahead and put a slip knot right on my hook. There we are. The only thing about crocheting with two strands is as you work, you just want to make sure you're always grabbing both of those and you don't accidentally leave one behind. If you do, just carefully frog your stitches, pull them out, and go back to where you were. So for the first row, we start with 45 foundation single crochets, and I'm going to show you how to do that, but if you prefer to avoid foundation stitches, you can instead chain 46, skip the chain closest to the hook, and then just work a single crochet in each remaining chain across. As long as you've got 45 single crochets at the end of the first row, it's absolutely fine. So now, let's start with a foundation single crochet. For the first one, I am going to chain two, one, and two, and when you're pulling off these cones, it's a good idea to try and pull those strands off together here. Let me get a little bit to work with. There we go but you don't want to pull too much ahead because you don't want to get them tangled either. So we've got our chain two, and now I'm going to go into the underneath loop of that chain furthest from my hook, the first chain I made. That's how I like to begin my foundation single crochets, and everybody does it a little bit differently. But I'm going to get that loop back on my hook there and just go under both of those strands that make up the loop underneath that first chain. There we are. And then I'll yarn over and pull up a loop and now I've got two loops left on my hook, so I'm going to yarn over and pull through the first one. That makes the chain at the bottom of our first stitch. Then when I yarn over and pull through two, we've now completed our first single crochet. So for the remaining foundation single crochets, what we need to do is put our hook under the two loops at the bottom of the previous stitch. Remember the ones I just said make the chain? And I know I'm calling it two loops and it looks like there's four pieces of yarn here. Of course there are four pieces of yarn, but really these are still just two loops. Remember we're counting these as one strand. So I'm going to yarn over and pull my loop up and through. Now this will be the chain at the bottom of this stitch. So I yarn over and pull through just that one to begin my single crochet and yarn over and pull through both to make my second. So let's go ahead and do that again. I'm going to go under both of those loops at the bottom of the previous stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, that will be the chain at the bottom of this one, yarn over, pull through just that loop to begin my single crochet, yarn over and pull through two to finish it. So again, you can choose to use these foundation single crochets or just do a long chain and single crochet back into it, however you prefer to do it for your first row is absolutely fine. Now, as I said, according to the pattern, the first row has 45 single crochets, but you can make this as wide or as narrow as you like, so go ahead and stop when you have the width of rug you like. Then it's time for the second row, which is the one we're going to make for the wrong side, and that's the one with our really fun loop stitch. So to begin the second row, we're going to go ahead and chain one, and of course turn to work the other direction, and then I'm going to put a single crochet right in the first stitch. 
Then I'm going to work the loop stitch in each stitch across until I get to the last one, and then I'll put a single crochet there too. It's just nice to begin and end each one of these loop stitch rows with a single crochet. It gives the rug a little bit more of a solid border. So to make the loop stitch, you're going to start by tensioning your yarn over your forefinger like this if that's not how you already do it. Because we're going to be using this forefinger to create the size of the loop of our loop stitch. So then I'm going to yarn over, I'm going to go into the next stitch, and I'm going to grab the yarn that is behind my finger. Normally we would use the yarn that's in front of your finger to yarn over and go with, but now we're going to grab the yarn that is behind your finger. And you can see I'm just grabbing it with my hook. I'm not trying to yarn over with it or anything. Then I'm going to pull that loop of yarn right up through that stitch. And I want to maintain enough tension that that loop on the back of my fabric here is about the size of my finger. Then I'm just going to yarn over, a little bit awkward, but take your time, it works. And then pull that through all three loops on my hook. So if you need to give those a little extra tug to get the room to pull through all three, you can do that. Or just take your time and work them off here in pairs. There we go. Just go ahead and get through all three of those loops that were on your hook and you've made a loop stitch. And you can see we make it from the wrong side of the fabric. This would be the bottom of our rug here, and this would be the top. And by holding these two strands together, we're getting two loops at a time for a really luxurious rug. So let's go ahead and do a couple more of those here together. I'm going to start by yarning over, and then I go into the next stitch, and I'm going to grab the yarn there that's behind my finger, and pull that up through my stitch. Let's see, there we go. Get all the loops on there nice. Then yarn over with the working yarn and pull through all three of those loops that are on the hook. That middle one does want to hide a little bit, so just take your time and make sure you get through there. That actually, that yarn over will help make this loop stitch on the back side, well, top side of your rug, a lot more secure. So we can do that again. We yarn over, go into the next stitch, grab the yarn that is behind the finger, Pull that on up through. Give those a little bit of a zhuzh to get you some working room. Then you can yarn over and pull through each of those sets of loops there. There we go, like so. Let's do it one more time. Well, at least a couple more times. We'll yarn over, go into the next stitch. Go ahead and straighten out the yarn if you need to. Grab the loops from behind your finger. Pull them on through. Yarn over and pull through all those loops. There we go, got them all off the hook there. There we go. So yarn over, go to the next stitch, grab the yarn from behind your finger, pull it through, yarn over again, and pull through all three of those loops. There we go. As you go, and if you're not trying to do it on camera, holding it out awkwardly away from your body, it gets a lot easier, but it does take a little bit of practice with this one. So let's do one more before we finish this row. I'm going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, Grab the yarn from behind my finger, pull it on through, yarn over, and pull through all those loops. There we are. So when you get to the final stitch of your row, however long you decided to make that row, just go ahead and put a single crochet right in that final one to sort of cap it all off. So that is our row two. Then we need to make row three. Row three is simply chain one, turn of course, or turn and chain one, however you like to do it, and then single crochet in each stitch across. So now we're just going to work into these as if they are normal stitches. You can see our loops are down here, so we've got the top of this stitch, which is very easy to work into. Of course, you need to pull up some more yarn if needed here from my cones. There we are. So simply row three is just chain one and single crochet on across. And you can see here in a moment how great those loop stitches look here on top of our rug. I'll just finish this off with our last stitch on our swatch here. There we are. You can see those loops are all locked in. So that's just our two row repeat. Now we would work another loop row and then another single crochet row and then another loop row and then another single crochet row on and on through about 83 rows or until you have the length of the row you want. After your 83rd row, then we're going to work our edging. Okay, so when you've got the length you want, you want to make sure to end on an odd numbered row, or in other words, a single crochet row worked from the right side of your rug. Then it's time for the finishing. 
where we're just going to work down the side, across our foundation row, and up the other side. That last row, row number 83, or whatever it number is for you, is actually the first part of our finishing round. Okay, so to begin the finishing, we're not going to turn, we're just going to continue working around our rug. So I'm going to start with a chain two, one, two, and then we're going to work right along this first side. We'll skip the first row and work a single crochet in the side of the row after that. So that right there is our first row. We wanna come down here and work our single crochet right in the side of that row. Wherever it feels good to put your hook and wherever it flo uh, goes in naturally should work fine. The great thing about using this variegated yarn with two strands held together is it's going to hide your stitches pretty darn well. So then we are going to begin the repeat that will take us down to our foundation. We chain one, skip the next row, and single crochet in the side of the next row. That's it. Just chain one, skip the side of the next row, and single crochet in the side of the row after that. Just like so. Then as we get here down towards the bottom, we are going to get right down here to the foundation chain. So we wanna chain two, one, two, and then when you get to that foundation chain, we're just gonna single crochet in each one of those. So if you used uh, chains instead of foundation single crochets, it's fine. Just crochet into the bottom of your starting chain, however you did it. So you might have two, uh, two loops here to go under like I do, or you might have just one. If you chained and worked under the top two loops, it doesn't really matter. However, whatever you've got left there at the bottom, along your beginning, you'll just wanna go ahead and work a single crochet in each one of those stitches. I really do like using the foundation single crochet, especially when I need to crochet back into it though, because it looks basically like another stitch, even though it is upside down. So we'll work our way all the way across here until we get to that last side. And obviously you can weave in your ends ahead of time if you want to, I've just got mine still hanging out here. And then when we get all the way across that foundation chain, we're going to again, chain two, and then begin again, just right along the side. Skip that first row there, come down to the next one, right there, wherever it feels good to put that hook, put a stitch in there, chain one, skip the next row, put a single crochet in the side of the next row. All the way along that second row until you get back up here to your last row, perhaps row 83. And then we're just going to chain two, one, two, and slip stitch that first stitch we made in row 30, 83. And then we can break our yarn and finish off. And that's how to crochet the loop stitch crochet lawn rug. Again, you'll find this free pattern on Yarn Inspirations. This has been Tamara Kelly from Moogly. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Thank you.